I'd, I'd like to start by just, I guess, reminding ourselves of the diagnostic gaps for the 1990-90 goals. I think we're all very familiar with these, but speaking from the laboratory community or the diagnostic community, we often uh, uh, recognize these goals, but don't necessarily get down to the details of how do we solve the actual testing piece within those. So in, when the 1990-90 global goals were announced in uh, 2014 in Melbourne, at the same time, at the same uh, conference two years ago, uh, the Diagnostic Access Initiative was launched. And this initiative brought together, uh, and you'll see their logos there on the screen, all of the major international players from the perspective of donors, uh, technical leadership, uh, implementing partners, brought them together to think really about how do we work collectively to solve the diagnostic challenges uh, around our new global uh, HIV goals. And this initiative, uh, which started with a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm, uh, uh, identified nine areas where it felt that more effort was needed to solve uh, these diagnostic challenges. And we'll, I'll go through each of these uh, in the presentation. The, these areas uh, starting at the top end with advocacy and financing. And we think about diagnostics, we think about, we understand that you know, in the past, testing has often been limited or, or, or perhaps not scaled up as aggressively because of uh, cost concerns and feasibility concerns. Um, today, we have a very different scenario. Feasibility of testing, for example, viral load testing is, is no longer a question. Uh, the, 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 the availability of guidelines, WHO's excellent new guidelines, which really strongly recommend testing throughout the, the entire care cascade uh, are, in, are in existence. And we have new technologies, te diagnostic technologies that both tests in a more established central laboratory as well as at the point of care exist today. So we have all of the, uh, uh, the ingredients, all the components needed to really uh, you know, deliver on all the testing uh, um, uh, needs that, we, that we're looking for. However, we still have, I would say, maybe a somewhat of a low degree of energy from the perspective of advocacy and prioritization of diagnostics. And it's partly because diagnostics are a little bit of a, uh, uh, of a less understood uh, uh, area. It's somewhat technical and we often there often is, not I think, the right understanding, certainly at the decision-making policy and resource allocation level, about what exactly needs to be done to transform to uh, testing levels to where we want to see them. And so uh, what I would say, um, and this you can see highlighted in the slide, it translates to uh, diagnostics uh, forming a very small proportion of the total uh, HIV uh, funding envelope across different countries uh, with a couple of exceptions. Um, it also, uh, that then cascades into this sort of negative cycle of inadequate investment, inadequate delivery, and therefore inadequate investment. Uh, I think it's very nice to see that this, the, the, the new global goals, as well as the, the Diagnosis Access Initiative and some of its early work has brought to the uh, global agenda and the global uh, dialogue uh, the importance of testing. And there's figure there of, of uh, UNAIDS leadership and other international partners coming together to talk about testing. That's uh, from the UN General Assembly in 2014 uh, uh, where Valod uh, pricing deal was announced. So coming back to, to uh, uh, the Diagnostic Access Initiative and why there are opportunities given these challenges to make changes. The, the, we, I think we've got to recognize that to the turning the ship or bending the curve on testing to achieve our goals and recognizing that 2020 is, is uh, a short time away and we've got a long way to go. There is a, a lot of different efforts and there are opportunities for collective action, for different partners to come together, to do what they currently do, but then also to bring their respective efforts together in a way that is synergistic and so that we can achieve more. Uh, and certainly from the advocacy uh, and financing perspective, uh, I feel that if we have better strategic information on testing gaps and some of the access gains that we achieve, and that information is really widely socialized, it'll help us really focus our efforts. Secondly, we need to elevate the testing agenda so that we are talking about testing, but not just about what we need to achieve in testing, but also what are the specific steps that we need that we could take, drawing from best practice and innovation. 
and have these discussions not only at the global level, and I think we've been relatively successful having uh, uh, more dialogue around diagnostics and testing at a global level, but bringing it down, that down to regional and national levels as well, and seeing how that uh, promulgates into planning and budgets. Uh, and from that, I think we need a very good consensus on, on the investment case. And the investment case uh, 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 approach has been used successfully in the HIV world uh, to focus investments um, to achieve greater, greater good. And uh, the, I think there are opportunities within the diagnostics arena to, to take a similar investment case approach, identify best practice, uh, and so that resources can be more effectively used. Secondly, forecasting and, 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 and pricing. Uh, test price is often, as I said earlier, being considered a barrier to, to providing uh, uh, um, a broad universal and, and high equity, high degree of equity in testing. And we've seen this sort of value testing, for example, uh, 15 years ago being at $100 or more, and that test price coming down gradually over the years to now less than $10. The, the opportunity exists, particularly with the HIV, HIV programs at such a large scale, for us to achieve certain market efficiencies that, if, that right now we're not take, making the best uh, use of. We're not leveraging the opportunity we have for the program that we have at the scale. And there's, of course, a relationship between uh, pricing and the availability of new diagnostics and new technologies and uh, the, the ability to, to provide, uh, I would say, good forecasts uh, for tests and also a more stable and reliable market. And that's the relationship between industry and the public sector. This is a, a graph showing on the red line is the projection of what we need to achieve in terms of vial load scale up. These are testing numbers by 2020. The blue line is what we expect, and this is consolidated forecast was led by WHO together with a number of other partners who came together to think about what do we expect in terms of value scale up over the coming years. And you can see that we're obviously not uh, where the red line is and there's uh, certainly room for improvement. We need to bend that curve upwards. Um, but it also, that forecast is also very valuable as a message to industry to uh, guide them on both reduced pricing as well as technology de development. And this was demonstrated uh, uh, two years ago and again last year with uh, the announcement of viral pricing deals and early infant diagnosis pricing deals that were achieved through, again, through a consortium effort of UNAIDS and in the case of viral load, the government of South Africa, the Global Fund, uh, PEFAR, DFID, and the Clinton Health Access Initiative came together to negotiate a deal for viral load testing. Uh, this deal uh, has had some benefit, it's still early days, $9 million saved, and uh, uh, it's contributed to an extra $1.5 million, $1 million tests conducted within 2015, and we hope that this, uh, this deal actually has uh, additional benefit over the coming years. From the perspective of technology development, again, good forecasts are necessary. This is a, a slide um, taken from a report put out by Unitate uh, in 2012, and you'll see from there two features. One is that, well, firstly, this is a slide of different uh, uh, diagnostic, point of care diagnostic technologies in the pipeline of development uh, for viral load and early infant diagnosis. And there are more than 10 different products here, and you can see that it's expected by 2016 these will all be in the market. Now, moving forward to where we stand today, uh, from the perspective of early infant diagnosis, there are only two of those products in the market, two or three of those products in the market right now. And so we've lost a lot of technologies, their timelines have moved back in terms of development, uh, and uh, that has had an effect on, on what we could have achieved. Imagine if we started rolling out improved diagnostic technologies three to four years ago, and where would, would, where would we be today? So what are the opportunities for collective action? So uh, consensus forecasts, I think WHO has done a fantastic job of, of uh, moving that agenda forward so that industry can understand uh, what to expect, and that can inform both their manufacturing and their development. Uh, secondly, there are opportunities for consolidated procurement and negotiation at national, regional, and global levels. And this is happening to, certain, to some extent, as I just described, but I think there are additional uh, opportunities. A lot of procurement happens in a very fragmented way. Bringing those volumes together uh, uh, can be, could potentially have a lot of, uh, uh, provide a lot of leverage in negotiations. And thirdly, uh, often industry is not at the table, 
when we're trying to understand why, aren't, why don't we have the tests that we want? Why don't we have the prices that we want? And I think bringing industry in to listen to their perspective could actually provide be uh, quite enlightening um, in terms of understanding the market challenges and some of the technology development uh, issues and what they need uh, to bring the right technologies to the market. And lastly, I, I want to talk about guidance and delivery. As I mentioned earlier, WHO as new guidelines really open the door. They provide very strong recommendations for uh, testing throughout the, the treatment and care cascade, which is excellent. Um, but even with that, we still see that with this graph that the blue line really needs to approach the red line at, uh, in terms of our current expected scale up of, for example, year viral load and what we, uh, what we need to achieve in terms of 1990-90. So there are implementation challenges. And we should be looking forward as well as looking backwards. Uh, so if you look backwards, scaling up of diagnostics on a global level uh, is not a new thing. We've, we've done it for 10 to 15 years, a CD4 tests. Uh, that was, and with early infant diagnosis, for almost 10 years we've been scaling up early infant diagnosis. And so we've achieved a lot. But if you look at right now levels of access, uh, even with CD4, we achieved maybe only a 60% degree level of access. Uh, and with early infant diagnosis, currently we're still uh, uh, in the lower sort of 40 to 50%. So, and furthermore, we also have uh, uh, issues with results delivery, where maybe 50% of the tests that are done uh, are actually not delivered uh, to, uh, to the people who are tested, and then therefore care does not move forward. And these are implementation challenges that we really need to think about how do we, how do we resolve. And this is highlighted in this slide, which shows that uh, right now most test results that come for an infant diagnosis arrive after the early peak of mortality in the first few months of life. And so lastly, I, there are opportunities for collective action here. Uh, we, we need to, to really look to see how we can identify and build consensus around some of the, uh, the I would say smart testing or the best practice approaches to implementation of diagnostics um, and share these widely so that we're not inventing the wheel in every setting. Uh, secondly, we need to build consensus around uh, how we measure testing and, and link testing not just to testing numbers but to the continuum of care and patient impact. And lastly, we need to, as I said earlier, bring together yeah, the consensus around what is an investment case for diagnostics delivery and implementation so the appropriate resources uh, can come behind this. So I'll end there, thank you. <laughs>